and on Nightfall. And since some of you have requested on my Twitter page, you know, I'll link that. Since you guys requested so much that, um, apparently you guys requested two different horror stories that, I guess. So apparently the first vote was one date night horror story, and you requested one, um, break-in story, but... I'm gonna start with the first one, a date night, and then the second one I will start later on in the night is a break-in story. Since you guys asked for it, why not? So my name, um, I cannot. Gary, Gary, question at Halloween. Can Halloween come in month? Yeah, I'll try to get like you know, but um, let's just start with that. So, I don't know. I'm an average girl, and I guess this happened back when I was 17, and um, a few months after my boyfriend dumped me, I was a little bit wanting to get back into the, um, the dating world, and I guess, um, I'm not one that use, I'm not one that likes to use Tinder or any of those dating websites, because you know you end up getting catfished, and you know. I guess I started talking to my childhood friend, um, I will not be using his name for privacy reasons, sorry hun, and I will be doing that, and I guess the two of us just started talking, and you know, we've been childhood friends since like, we were like, you know, plus, not only that, but when I was living in New York, I kind of lived in a cul-de-sac area, so we always like, I was always out playing with the neighborhood kids, and you know, he was one of them in his group, so I guess it became like, when I was like, kind of in that stage, and I was like, oh, um, and I guess we started talking, and we started talking over the phone, in text, in person, and I guess, like, he got off his work, um, early, and I guess he started to say stuff like, I like you, you're pretty, and I said, uh, you want to go out sometime, and I said, yeah, just, uh, let me ask my mom, and apparently my mom has, like, met the guy dozens of times, she's like, and I asked my mom if I could go out, and she said yes. So, um, I'm, like, getting ready, and I guess, um, he texted me and said, oh, um, he said, are you up for Chinese food? And I said, yes. And he's like, why don't you just, like, and he said, um, why don't you come to the house, uh, bring your dog, and maybe a movie, he said, what's your favorite movie? And I said, um, Step Brothers, and, you know, if you guys don't know, Will Ferrell, John C. Riley, 3930, uh, you know. Apparently, he gets Chinese food. Um, I'm a huge fan of peppered steak, apparently. And me being a freak, I am one for Chinese food, but I'm not going to eat it now because of coronavirus. And I guess I, I know, I kind of get in the car, and I bring my dog, and I guess, you know, he's got, I have a golden retriever, and he has a, uh, he has two Siberian Huskies. One is a gray and silver, and he has one that's like a white and brownish type color. Um... That's, um, we have, uh, the dog's names are, um, Con Countess and Duchess, and my dog's name is Shadow, so he pretty much was having the time. We were sitting down watching, um, we were, and plus it was December, so it was, like, a couple of months after I was, uh, 17, and we started to watch the movie Elf, because it's, like, one of my top favorite Christmas movies, and apparently, the, the front window door opens... And I'm in the kitchen, and I'm screaming bloody murder, and then my boyfriend comes rushing in like, Babe, what's wrong? I'm like, there's somebody trying to open up the window. So apparently, his mom wasn't home, and he grabbed a, um, he grabbed like a blunt object, and apparently smashed it at the guy, and the guy was like, screaming. So... And the guy screamed, he was in agony, and then I think he eventually called the police, and the guy was like, so the police go around back, they have the canines there, and and uh, the thing is, the guy is arrested for a attempted breaking and entering. So I call my mom, he calls his mom, and apparently they did ask the same question, what happened, and when I said the guy was arrested for an attempted breaking and entering. So we went to investigate the the, um, the backyard the next day, because I went back over there, and apparently there was a smashed hole in the fence that apparently that could be used for anything to get in. Yeah, it was kind of hard, and I guess to me being new to this horror story, yeah, um, we're okay, but 
to just say that is like, you know, and plus, it's hard, I mean, and, and then next up, it started raining, and I was like, I mean, it's rain, and I mean, we don't really go out a lot when it's raining, but I guess, um, I go home, and I see a figure when I'm, like, driving, so I don't know who this person is, but they're, like, kind of having the thumb out and hitchhiking, and apparently, I drive past them, because this, I don't pick up hitchhikers, and it's really dangerous. Yeah, I don't pick up, I mean, you don't, don't pick up hitchhikers, it's very, very dangerous. Yeah, so I drive past, and I look in my rearview mirror, and he's like, so I actually floor it. Because apparently he wants to get in, and he's screaming, like, stuff that I couldn't make out. And I guess, um, I kind of hit into a, um, into a nice, nice little, um, thing. And he's kind of stopping, and I'm just like, oh my god. And apparently I drove off. And I guess, next up, I kind of get home, pull into the driveway, get out. Grab my key out of my pocket, lock the door, and apparently I, um, it's about, you know, 8, 8.50, um, 9 o'clock, and I guess, you know, I'm in, I get out of the shower, put on my pajamas, my mom is home, and she's probably in her room reading. And I hear a knock, at, I hear pounding on the door with, this is how the guy was doing it. And he began screaming profanities, and I guess, I was just like, so I checked the security cameras, because I can do that on the television too. And it's the same guy, and I don't know how he found my house. And apparently my mom is crying, my sister is crying, and my mom's on the phone with the 911 operator, because apparently... This guy, next up, smashes the basement window to our house. And I guess I the basement door locks from the, outs from the outside, and I guess he couldn't get in, so he started screaming on that door. So by the time he tried getting in again, the police arrived at our front door, and apparently this guy was not able to escape. They handcuffed him, and apparently... That guy was never seen again. And, yeah. Um, apparently, my date night... I did talk to my boyfriend again. He called me to make sure I was okay. So, yeah. Um, I ended up being okay, but for a harsh minute... It really was a terrifying date night, but... I guess I did another date just so he could make up for it, and it's nice, all fun and games, nice little, um, night. And I guess my phone rings, and I get this weird number. It's not even my boyfriend's, and I have it charging, and he's like, um, hey, I think you're cute, and I'm like, who is this? And then, you know, dot, 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 because somebody's texting me. He said, um, oh, it's Igor, and I'm like, I'm like, I dumped you. Yeah, I guess he's my ex now. And I guess I'm like, I'm like, how do you have my number? And he's like, oh, um, one of your friends gave it to me. I'm like, I told my friends not to give you my number. I said, if you come to- Yeah, not to mention, um, don't, don't mention anything about, you know, Jay, you know what? So apparently, um, he's quote-unquote apologizing for certain things. I mean, you know, not to mention last month, you really wrecked my family because you were faking my death for something. And I was just like, is this a joke? You're gonna fake my death for what? Oh, you mean that son of a bitch? Yeah. Why well, so he bothered to contact you again? Yeah, not to mention, I've already had enough out of him, so apparently I got a restraining order on him, and I was like, you know what? You know, I wish he, you know, he should be arrested for that. Yeah, he, there, that hasn't been made yet, and I haven't got a phone call yet. 
so yeah, um, it was really hard, and just to understand that, you know, I mean, he did fake my death last month, but it's not something you guys and girls should do to people. I'm gonna say it right now, death is not funny. It's a serious thing, and to fake somebody's death, and then, I mean, not to mention my family was harassed, and they're asking, is she alive or is she dead? And apparently, I have been in tears, but, you know, I'm still trying to get through it, but, you know, my boyfriend that I have currently has been very, very sweet and very loving. That's wearing the hat he gave me. Alright, um, never mind that. Date night? Um, I mean, it did go well. Um. Yeah, it was kind of hard, and I guess, for me... Date night? Um, I remember that, um, we did do it a couple of times, but then we did it again probably before Valentine's Day, because he had to work, and he felt bad. And, um... Uh, Two hours in, I'm at the house, and I guess the dogs, uh, my dog and his two huskies start barking, and I'm just like, is this, like, what's going on? And I said, our dogs are acting weird, and, um, yeah, our dogs have been acting really weird for some reason. So he goes out, and he takes his father's, um, gun, because he thinks someone is loitering around her property. And then he comes back up the steps, terrified, like he's seen a ghost. And he says that one of the neighbors has acted crazy. And apparently, the neighbor across the street from his house has called the police, because apparently someone was, apparently, this neighbor is mentally ill and um, has, like, mental, mental ill intentions, but... Yeah. But you took, you took Galaxy about that? Uh, about my ex-boyfriend faking my death, yes. I mean, she already knows this no, stuff. That. I would talk about that, you know, you finally made it to 40. Oh, yeah, I did. But she was there. Yeah, so eventually, it's hard to know. So yeah, um, I guess, so this is somewhat of an after date night story, because I have a lot, and I mean, um, so apparently, I do voice acting here on YouTube, and I guess my friend Luke had called me for another audition for some reason. And I said yes, and he said, I need you at the studio. And I said, okay. Well, the studio is his freaking basement, so there you have it. And I guess he said um, he wanted me to play a Transformers Prime OC called Arena. So I said, well, who's Arena? And he says, oh, Arena is an OC. You know, this is not a real character in the show. She's an original character. I don't know. Um, one of my friends created her, but um, that's not really the point. Okay. So apparently I am voicing Arena, and she is a Transformers Prime OC, but she's not a human. She's a formling. And apparently she is known to be in care of a godfather because her parents are nothing but devils and they don't care for her. So, I apparently read my lines, and I'm in the basement just recording my lines, and apparently I'm reading the lines, and I have the headphones on really low so that Luke can hear me, and I hear a, I hear glass shattering, and we're in, I guess because Luke has a basement that goes like this, and he had the basement door closed, so he tells me take off the headset, and my boyfriend was there watching, and apparently I hear a huge banging on the door with somebody screaming, saying, I will kill you all. And I said, so we run up the stairs, which is behind me, which is in his little recording box. So I run up there and his mom is there waiting there with the police because somebody broke into the house. So it was a mentally ill, crazy woman. 
And I said, oh my god. And apparently, the lady was detained with, you know, she got charged for breaking and entering. And apparently, the ba the basement window that was smashed, uh, they just got it fixed yesterday. So, apparently, me being 17 and having all this encounter really left an effect on me. And I will never, ever forget that day when I was voice acting. Because I could have been severely hurt. And for me to be like, you know, like this, because I actually had the sweatshirt on that happened that day. So, and, you know, to have that, I mean, yes. If, um, to anybody that's looking for a voice actress, I can definitely do. But I have, I'm very strict with the fandoms and I will release that on another video. But you have to read the description because I'm very, very strict. Um, I will do a character from the show or I will do an OC, which is an original character. But I will always give credit to creators. So yeah, um, those are all my stories for date nights, and apparently they're all different stories, so about five different stories, and, um, oh yeah, so this is my first horror story of when it comes to date night, because this is, like, something this happened when I was 17, and these are all very bad encounters. So I'm Jade, signing off. And I fall off, too. And the next video is coming out.